The number one metaphor I have in my mind for writing a screenplay is that you're trying to climb a mountain blindfolded. And the funny thing about that is you think, okay, that's hard because you're climbing up a rock face and, and, and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where the top is. You can't see what's below you. But actually the hardest part about climbing a mountain blindfolded is just finding the mountain. Hey everybody, I'm Michael Arndt, the screenwriter of Toy Story 3. Now at Pixar, there's a lot of people who contribute ideas to the story, but I'm the guy who actually has to sit down and type them into a computer. So when we started working on Toy Story 3, we had a hard time getting the story set up in the right way. And I think this is a common problem in screenwriting. A lot of times when a film doesn't work, it seems like the problem is with the ending, but in fact, the seeds of failure have been planted at the beginning. So on Toy Story 3, after several months of sort of floundering around and going in circles, I finally decided to go back and look at Toy Story and Finding Nemo and The Incredibles and figure out, well, how do they set up their characters and their worlds and their stories? So this is something I learned at Pixar, how to write a good beginning. Usually a script is about 100 pages long with three acts, and the first act is about 25 pages long, the second act is about 50 pages, and the third act is the last 25. Now you start your first act by setting up your hero and his or her world. And by page 25, you've given your hero a goal and set them off on the journey that they'll take in the second act. So let's begin at the beginning, page one, introducing your main character. So usually what you do when you're introducing your main character is you show them doing the thing they love most. Like this is their grand passion. It's their defining trait. It's the center of their whole universe. Come on, Woody. So in Woody's case, he's introduced playing with Andy. And that's his favorite thing. Like that's the thing that defines who he is as a person. With Marlon, Marlon's a family man. You know, he's just moved into a new house with his wife. They have a whole new brood of little eggs and he couldn't be happier. And then with The Incredibles, you introduce Mr. Incredible being a superhero. So you start with your main character, you introduce the universe they live in, and you show your hero doing the thing they love to do most. But then your character needs one more thing. She needs a flaw. Now what's key here is that your character's flaw actually comes out of her grand passion. It's a good thing that's just been taken too far. So in Woody's case, he takes pride in being Andy's favorite toy. I'm not worried, you shouldn't be worried. Of course Woody ain't worried. He's been Andy's favorite since kindergarten. He loves being Andy's favorite toy so much that he doesn't want to share that with anyone. In the case of Nemo, Marlin wants so badly to be a good parent that he's a little bit insecure. What if they don't like me? Marlin. Oh, really? With The Incredibles, Mr. Incredible is a little bit like Woody in that he takes pride in his place of being Mr. Number One. And he doesn't want to share that with anyone. Who are you supposed to be? Like you see it when he bumps into Buddy. I'm your number one fan! <laughs> And you see it again when he bumps into Elastigirl on the roof. We could share, you know. I work alone. So you establish your character, you establish the world they live in, you establish the grand passion that they're defined by, and you establish a hidden flaw that comes out of this grand passion. And then you want to establish storm clouds on the horizon, which is your character's walking down the road of life, it's a nice, bright, sunny day, but off there on the horizon, there's some dark storm clouds gathering. So in the case of Toy Story, it's Andy's birthday party. Oh yes, one uh, minor note here. Andy's birthday party has been moved today. Uh, uh, next we have a... And all the toys are fretting about being replaced and Woody has to say, no one's getting replaced. This is Andy we're talking about. And with Nemo, you set up the fact that there's an indoors inside the anemone where they're safe and there's an outdoors, the rest of the ocean, which is implicitly dangerous. And then for the Incredibles, I love you, but if we're going to make this work, you got to be more than Mr. Incredible. Helen is saying to Bob, things are going to change after we get married. And then you have Buddy showing up and being jealous of Mr. Incredible and saying, well, this is because I don't have powers, isn't it? Well, not every superhero has powers, you know. You can be super without them. So you're establishing that there's a resentment out there from normal people against superheroes. And you're establishing Helen saying to Bob, look, things are going to change. So you start with your main character. You have what they're defined by. You have a hidden flaw. You establish storm clouds on the horizon. And then, ba-boom! Something comes in and totally blows apart your hero's life and turns it upside down. Whoa, whoa, did I frighten you? So in the case of Toy Story, Buzz arrives and Woody gets displaced. This is my spot, see, the bed here. Local law enforcement, it's about time you got here. And in Nemo, the Barracuda shows up and Marlon's family gets killed except this one last little egg. In The Incredibles, ba-boom, you know, Mr. Incredible saves this guy, but then he gets sued and superheroes get banned. And in each of these cases, if you go back and you look at what their grand passion was, Woody being Andy's favorite toy, Marlin and his family, Mr. Incredible being a superhero, that's the thing that gets taken away from them. It totally changes your character's sense of what his or her future is gonna be. But that bolt from the blue, ba-boom, isn't enough on its own. It's not enough just to ruin your character's life and take away their grand passion and change their whole sense of what the future is gonna be. Hey! You gotta add insult to injury. 
You gotta have something that's gonna make the whole world seem a little bit unfair. Watch yourself. So not only does Woody get replaced, but he gets replaced by this total doofus, this imbecile who doesn't even know that he's a toy. And they get in this whole argument about whether Buzz can fly or not. And Buzz jumps and bounces and flies around the room and all the other toys go, oh my God, he really can fly. And the key thing here is that everyone is impressed for the wrong reason. Coral? In the case of Nemo, you don't need to really add insult to injury. We already understand that the world Marlon lives in is unfair. But on the other hand, with The Incredibles, the reason superheroes get banned is because Mr. Incredible was trying to do the right thing. Hey, I saved your life! You didn't save my life, you ruined my death! That's what you're Listen, my client has no further comment at this time. So now, your main character's life has changed. Her grand passion has been taken away. The world has revealed itself to be hey. unfair and she comes to a fork in the road, and she's gonna have to make a choice on how to deal with her new reality. There's a high road to take, a healthy, responsible choice, or a low road to take and make an unhealthy, irresponsible choice. <laughs> and remember, if your character chooses to do the right thing, you really don't have a story. For Woody, the healthy choice is to say, look, I had my day in the sun, I was Andy's favorite toy for a long time, and I have to cede the spotlight at a certain point. Yeah! But what happens is that Woody makes the unhealthy choice. Woody tries to push Buzz behind the desk. And the key thing here is that we're rooting for Woody to do the unhealthy, irresponsible thing because we feel his pain at getting replaced. So your character's unhealthy choice, Woody's unhealthy choice, creates a crisis, Buzz getting pushed out the window, which leads to all the other toys confronting Woody and saying, you can't stay in Andy's room until you go find Buzz and bring him back here safe and sound. And that's your first act break. You see a similar thing in Finding Nemo when Marlon finds Nemo at the edge of the open ocean. Nemo! No! Dad? Marlon's unhealthy choice, his overprotectiveness, comes out of his grand passion, his love for his son. Okay, I was right. You know what? We'll start school in a year or two. No, Dad! And his unhealthy choice provokes a crisis, Nemo saying, I hate you. Swimming out to the boat to prove his independence, and then getting caught by the diver. Dad! And now Marlon has a goal that's going to take him all the way through the rest of the story. With The Incredibles, the responsible choice is for Bob to do what his wife tells him to do. Go save the world one policy at a time, honey. But that would be boring, and you'd have no story. So the irresponsible choice for Bob... Hey, Lucius! Hey, Speedo! I'll be back later. ...is to lie to his wife, Helen, and go moonlighting with his buddy, Frozone. And we're totally rooting for Bob to make the irresponsible choice because we saw how much he loved being a superhero, we saw how good he was at it, and we saw how unfairly it was taken away from him. And that unhealthy choice, sneaking around, leads to a crisis, Mirage tracking him down, which leads to Syndrome bringing Bob out of retirement, and you're off into your second act. I'm in. So your story is coming out of your character's deepest desires and their darkest fears. The thing they love gets taken away from them, and the world is revealed to be unfair. To put things right, they have to make the journey that is the rest of the film. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the journey, hopefully they'll not only get back what they lost, but they'll be forced to fix that little flaw they had when we first met them. So that's what I learned at Pixar. And I'm not saying that all stories have to start this way, but if you're writing a script and you're having a hard time getting started, I hope these ideas are helpful.